I'm done. <laughs> Can't believe it. I sat down in this chair over a year ago and proclaimed that my hometown was dying. Hi, I'm Dan and my hometown is dying. And that started me on this journey of trying to save the stories of my small hometown. So I decided I'm going to go home. I want to go home and talk to the people who live there. The people who live there the whole life. The people whose families, generation after generation, have lived there. People who just moved there. Young people, old people, politicians, farmers, realtors, ranchers. Pretty much anybody who will talk to me and just find out what's going on in Roby and whether or not you can save it. So, you see, it's about this time last year I discovered a statistic that the population for my hometown was slowly declining. And that sparked this, I don't know what you call it. There's there's a feeling right now and it's a compelling feeling and I don't know if other people feel like this when they start a story or desire curiosity and me to go home and try and capture the stories of my small town and I did that this is not the story I thought it would be it really wasn't, but what a journey of discovery. Now, for the record, I grew up in this town my entire life. We moved there when I was five or six years old. My parents still live there. I go back there at least once a year. But what I never knew in all those years were things like there was a North Roby. North Roby was actually, it, uh, it, it really was just a, more of a name that it was a community. It was just, a, uh, there was a church building out there and of course there was just some, of course some residents out there, not very many, but uh, it, it, just, it was just a place out there between here and Rotan. We're at North Roby. And this used to be a town, huh? This, this is Gravesite, yes, the town of North Roby. I discovered four and a half miles north of Roby was a little town that used to be called Fisher. And it was actually laid out about the same time as Roby. And through land deals and different business arrangements, they ended up changing the name from Fisher to North Roby for the post office and for the school that was had been established out there. And what I quickly realized is there were dozens of these little towns. There were a lot of towns in Fisher County. There were a lot of schools. There were more than 50 schools. And I learned that when this farming community started to be established, that there were tons of migrant workers who would come into the town and it would literally balloon four, five, ten times its size. We had a lot of migrant workers during the fall and those uh, grocery stores were just overwhelmed. And because uh, it was before we started getting the mechanical strippers to get the cotton out. And so we had to have hand labor to do that. I can remember 13 gas stations. I think I worked at about half of them washing cars. Uh, barbershops, three barbershops uh, at Roby. Uh, my dad was busy all the time cutting hair. Saturdays, <clears throat> you couldn't find a parking place in Roby on Saturdays. Everybody came to town on Saturday. And so they established these little towns with a school, maybe a church, maybe a, a little post office to service those communities of farmers. So nearly everywhere you had a school, you had a church, and maybe a little grocery store. Um, some of them grew to more than that, and some of them never did. I never knew any of this. And I never knew that at one point, Fisher slash North Roby 
was considered to be the county seat. Found an old newspaper with this article in it. And they talked about moving all the county seat here at one time, but then they decided not to. And it got my imagination spinning like, what could have happened? What if it actually moved to North Roby? Because I also discovered the reason that Roby still exists in a lot of ways is because it is the county seat. That's where the courthouse is. That's where the business is. And so there was a real opportunity that there might not be a Roby. And that just kind of blew my mind. We're still trying to maintain the courthouse, trying to maintain roads, precinct, commissioners. So, and we've maintained so far. We're trying to squeeze a little there and a little here. And then I discovered, oh, by the way, there was an electric trolley that went from North Roby to Roby. Who knew that? And the building was still down there. It absolutely amazed me. And that there was a larger train system that was connecting Roby. I remember there was a railroad track and a, and a depot, and they turned the depot into an ice house. And one of the other big things that I literally didn't realize until I sat down with one of my interviews with Britt Stewart and I said, how long has your family lived in Roby? And he started backing up and I discovered his great, great grandparents, maybe great grandparents were the founding family. My grandfather, Max, was born in Roby. His, uh, his dad was born on the way to Roby. He came out here in 1905. He came down through Falls, from Mississippi to Falls, Oklahoma. His uh, wife was 28 years old. My granddad was nine and she died. And he raised those three kids by himself. They had three kids. They had two girls and one boy. Okay. And the mother died on her way here in childbirth with the final with the youngest kid so that held them up a while and then they moved on came here with the McClure's and set up and raised the family here in Roby but one of the ladies married a Terry one of the ladies married a Moore and then of course the Stuart so that's what made Stuart's Terry's and Moore's all kin. That's how all this interconnectivity started I just knew I was never related to anybody in Roby. Well, except for the Morgasons, my cousins. But that, uh, that's where that strong family bond came from. And I discovered little things that just made me smile, like Florence Wiley, the mom of one of my closest friends in high school, was voted most popular. And when I saw the photo in the yearbook, as I thumbed through yearbook after yearbook, it was after she got married. That's amazing. I also knew that Ted Posey used to be a teacher, but whenever I talked to Ted, he shared with me every bit of knowledge he had. And I learned so many things about the farming community, how farming works. You gather the crop like that, that's called picking cotton. And I'm really grateful for that because I was never a farmer's kid. And good old Jack Brown, I'd never met Jack. And <laughs> he was just a bucket of delight. So, in fact, he climbed a water tower for me to shoot some footage, so I'm grateful for that. And one of the biggest discoveries I made was probably Jeff Branson. Now, Jeff was in my class. Jeff was valedictorian of my class. Jeff was that perfect blend of smarts and athletic, team captain, winning all the awards, getting all the scholarships. And what I didn't realize until 30 years later is what a great guy he is. He helped me at every turn. Literally, I could text him or email him and say, hey, could you maybe do this for me? And he always said yes, when he could have easily said no. And I gotta be honest with you, he broke a, one or two laws for me, so we'll keep that on the download, but thanks, Jeff. Anyway, that's it. Picture is locked, which is an expression that say, says, I've just got to stop editing at some point. I could keep tweaking and pushing and moving things around, but I think I'm ready to be done. And so the next big thing that I want to announce in this, what could be the final vlog, I may sneak one or two in after this, is uh, that I'm premiering in Abilene, Texas. 
and I am so, so excited. Um, I think it is so appropriate because as a kid, you could go to Sweetwater and they had two screens, but if you wanted to go to a movie, and boy did I love movies, you had to go to Abilene. And I can't tell you how many movies I've seen in Abilene. So I'm excited that at the Town & Country Drive-In Theater, I'll put some facts somewhere that gives you more information on that, the movie will be premiering. And the wonderful gentleman there, Ray Andrews, Andrus, Ray Andrus, is actually screening it for free, I think. So if you want to go out there July 14th and see this short little movie I made, it's only about 30 minutes long, um, I'd love to have you out. It'd be so nice to go out there. And if you want to video the premiere for me and take pictures, because unfortunately I can't be there with everything going on in the world, I'd love to see them. Go to my website, streetypower.com. You can email me there and just let me know what you thought and email me photos and email me uh, videos, whatever happens. And let me know what you think about the movie. And hopefully soon after that, I'll have digital downloads and potentially DVD sales on the website too if you're interested in owning your own copy. So that's it. I think I'm done. Maybe I'll do one on the premiere. We'll see. I'm just excited to say thank you, Roby, for letting me make this movie and being a part of it. And uh, here we go. So, let's go. Thank you.